Okay, so welcome everyone to the uh, EdTech Society's Masterclass Toll using no code AI tools for systematic literature review. So we are so thankful for today's uh, you know, presentation and uh, we have uh, Assistant Professor Shamtak Das from IIT Bombay. So he'll be talking to us about how can you can use the AI you know, uh, and other tools to do a systematic literature review. So we are so excited to hear from uh, him and learn from him. And, uh, you know, it's a great opportunity for all of us as EdTech Society members uh, to join this session. And before we start the session, I just want to give you a brief uh, uh, introduction to EdTech Society to those who are new. And I know all of you are members, but still uh, want the new members, you know. Uh, so EdTech Society is a non-profit professional organization. Um, to, you know, bringing together education, technology, and society. So it's it's your organizations, you know, we have different uh, programs are coming up. And um, so one important event it's coming is the um, T4E conference uh, in November in IIT Bombay. So please do share and uh, please do register. The registration is open now. And... Uh, there are different other programs will be coming soon. You know, we also organize the perspective, a yeah, panel session as well. Um, uh, and there are some focused interviews also we are planning to happen. So by the, uh, so it will be coming soon, different programs. So I just want to thank you all for joining today uh, to uh, this session. And uh, so now I am handing over to uh, uh, Dr. Shamtak Das to lead this session. Dr. Shamtak. Thank you so much, Briju. Uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes, yes, we can hear you. Okay, thank you. So today, hi, so uh, good morning, everyone. So I'm Shaman Takdas. I'm an assistant professor in interdisciplinary program in educational technology at IIT Bombay. And uh, I, I'm very thankful to Briju and uh, Ed Tech Society for allowing me, giving this chance to give a masterclass on how to use no-code AI tools for systematic literature review. So today I'm going to do some hands-on demo also to show you how you can use uh, no-code AI tools for doing your systematic literature review. So here is the overview of the master class. So we'll be going through these four uh, topics basically, understanding what is systematic literature review. I'm not going to go very detailed into this because I'm assuming most of you have done systematic literature review in some part of your academic career. Uh, what are the types of systematic literature review? What are the steps required to perform a systematic literature review using some AI-based tools? And how to use no-code AI intelligence tools for doing this systematic literature review? The fourth part will be more of a hands-on. OK, so at any point of time, if you have some queries, just let me know. Uh, someone from the, the back end will be able to help me to uh, answer your queries. OK. So what systematic literature review is all about? So system, So here is a very good definition from the Technology University in Berlin that says that the systematic literature review or SLR, as we say, is an independent academic method that aims to identify and evaluate all the relevant literature on a topic in order to derive some conclusion about the question under consideration. So we as academicians always do uh, systematic literature review to answer some questions about some topics. Okay, so for this, we usually follow some protocols. So an SLR protocol documents all the information gathered and the steps taken as a part of an SLR in order to make the selection process very transparent and reproducible. So one of the example is the Prisma flow diagram. So I'm not going to explain what the Prisma flow diagram is. But this is one of the standard protocols that we use for doing the systematic literature review. Now, the concern with the current way of doing systematic literature review is that it is essentially a human-based uh, um, manual task. So we have to go through a lot of literature to find out that what are the possible academic papers or say journals, conference publications that are that we can use to find the questions 
uh, we are looking to solve. Okay, so this has two uh, major issues. First is it takes a lot of time to find all those papers. Second, we cannot be sure that whether we are going in the right track or in the right direction to find the answers for our uh, questions. So to solve this, we are we do not, we are we are going to look into how AI tools can actually help us in reducing this time. Now here is the caveat. The thing is that we are not saying that because of using AI tools, we are uh, not going to do the um, uh, reading of the papers. No, we have to read the read those papers. So there is no way out from that. But while reading those papers, these AI tools can actually help you to understand those papers find out what those papers are saying, identify the relevant papers that are going around those papers. So, so, so this is a structured way to do the uh, literature review in a more, in a much less, less time compared to what you do you, when you doing it manually over using say Google search or say any other uh, academic search tool. Okay. So let's, now look into what are the various types of systematic literature review, which we are going to look into. So first is basically a general type of systematic literature review. So most scholars do this in the beginning of their academic research. So for example, I am trying to look into the role of artificial intelligence in cancer treatment research. So I am not looking for a specific question or an answer to a specific question, but I am looking more into understanding what's the basic role of artificial intelligence in a cancer treatment research and trying trying to broaden uh, my uh, understanding about that subject and the domain and then from there probably try to find out what are the areas where i can further look into to for my uh, re particular research a second one is very specific which is mostly the advanced level scholars do look, look into while looking for some specific answers for example, say what is the accuracy of a convolutional network, neural network based algorithm in identifying the pancreatic cancer. So, so there's a vast difference between the type of systematic literature we do depending upon our requirement. So if we're looking for a general type of systematic literature review, we take a particular step. If we're looking for some specific literature review, we do a from a different part, a different way, we try to address that. So for the sake of simplicity for today's master class, I am going to look into more about the general way of looking, doing a systematic literature review. So what are the steps we can uh, use for uh, systematic literature review using the AI? The first part is, so uh, this is not very related to some, uh, say, some existing frameworks like Prisma, but this is more like what I use for uh, using doing the systematic literature review using AI. So these are the eight steps that I usually follow and uh, I'm going to explain how this works. So first part is identifying the seed papers or the base papers. So let's say we are starting off with uh, trying to identify that what are the role of, uh, of artificial intelligence in cancer treatment. So from So once I start looking into this particular problem, I'll, I need to identify certain papers which will, which, 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 uh, using which we, I can get started with. Okay, so these I'm calling as the seed papers or the base papers. So once I identify these seed papers or the base papers, then I try to find what are the leaf papers. Now, what are the leaf papers? So for every paper, there will be two sets of uh, additional papers related with it. First is the ancestral, or the second is the successors. So the ancestral papers are basically the papers that came prior to this paper, prior to my seed paper, and which my seed paper has already referred to. The successor papers are going to be those papers which, uh, which has cited my seed paper. Okay, so this is what I mean by seed paper and leaf paper. So once I identify my seed paper and leaf paper, my next objective is to prepare my knowledge base. So for each seed paper, I'm going to have a set of leaf papers. And when I combine all these seed papers and these leaf papers together, they'll give me my knowledge base. So this is the third step. The fourth step is understanding what the paper says. Now, we need to understand what each paper is saying. Sometimes we find a fantastic paper, 
but we are sometimes unable to understand what the exact thing that the paper is trying to say or what the, what the graph is trying to say or, or what the table which is being given in the paper is uh, how to interpret that table so there are ai tools that can help you to do this fourth a fifth step would be analyzing the data which is associated with this paper so nowadays most papers comes with their own data set and say once we try to understand a, a paper we need to also look into that particular data uh, set using which that paper was prepared so so there are ai tools that can actually help you to understand or interpret the, that particular data set if you have access to and as, as you give a query to that particular ai tool it can actually show you that uh, what is the answer to, against that query so the sixth step is consolidating the database so now once i have studied these seed papers and leaf papers together now i need to create my own knowledge base from where i can derive the research gaps and uh, the possible areas in for, for future research after this i am going to look for more associated and relevant information say in terms of papers and data set let's say i find a particular author is very good in in this particular in in this in this research area so what are the other papers this particular author has looked into who are the other collaborators uh, or say authors with whom this particular author has collaborated so what are those papers so these are the more associated and relevant information i need to find from that particular author and the last part is writing the synthesis but since we are uh, have a limited time for today's master class i'll just be showing you how to identify the first two that is identify the seed papers or the base papers and then finding the leaf papers both ancestral and successors okay so now i'm going to shift into an online uh, direct demo uh, where i'll be showing you how you can access those these tools and uh, uh, how, how to how to create your own account and how to start doing your own systematic literature review okay any questions till now if there is no question i am shifting into doing the demo part I hope my screen is visible. Anyone? It, it, it's coming. It's coming. Yes, okay. we can see. Thanks. Thanks. Okay. So the first tool I'm going to talk about is called Elicit. So go to Google, type elicit.org, and it will take, take you to the first result called Elicit, the AI research assistant. Okay. Click here and it will ask you to sign in. And this is the landing page of the AI uh, LLC tool. And it will ask you to sign in or sign up. Okay, since I already have an account, so I'm directly going to sign in. Uh, those who uh, do not have an account, you can later make an uh, account and start using it. So this is the home page of LLC which uh, says, uh, welcome to Elicit, your uh, AI research uh, assistant. And it has a particular three uh, workflows. So first workflow is extract information from PDFs. Second is discover concept across papers. And third is find scientific research papers uh, against this. So this is the new version of Elicit. Previously, there used to be an, another old version of Elicit, which allows you to uh, give your questions initially, uh, give your research area. And you can generate some uh, some initial set of questions to uh, look into but uh, they are probably uh, in, incorporate this in the uh, in, in some future version but currently this present version do not have that okay so let's start with find scientific research papers okay so as i click on this you can see that there is a question uh, there is a tab that gets opens here which says that search for papers get a table of published research papers related to your question or a topic so we'll go ahead with the uh, same example that we we, we are showing uh, 
in this uh, master class say role of artificial intelligence in cancer treatment research so just for the sake of simplicity i am keeping a very generic kind of uh, uh, topic for so that everybody can understand so this is our topic role of artificial intelligence in cancer treatment research and let's click on search so it will take some time and then it will generate a set of summary as well as a list of relevant papers for your uh, given uh, this query So you can see already that it has generated some result. Okay, so let me explain the page one by one. So at the very top, you can see the summary of the top four papers. So it gives you a paragraph where it summarizes the uh, top four papers, which uh, which is on this particular domain, the role of artificial intelligence in ca cancer treatment, and it gives a consolidated summary that how AI has been using. Uh, has been used for cancer treatment. So it also cites a couple of papers, uh, say, for example, this paper, Kishore 2021, another paper, Binder 2021, Gupta 2021. And it gives you a, a top summary of the uh, summary of the top four papers. So you can even copy it, uh, say, from here directly and paste it into, uh, say, any, any document that you are making notes or something like that. OK, so let me come down to some part below. So here you have the option of sorting, adding columns, and filters. Okay. So the first thing you can look into here is called uh, sorting. So so what what's the what are the way you want to sort these results? So you can either go for say most cited, or you can go for the most recent. Okay. So let's look what are the most recent papers in this particular. Uh, area so it says that there is a paper in 2023 by uh, jin lia which talks about artificial intelligence assist precision medicine in cancer treatment so there is another paper in 2022 uh, by the role of artificial intelligence in cancer diagnosis and drug development there is one paper by uh, by kishore there is one paper by winder okay so similarly like this you can see that what are the recent papers that has been published in this particular area. If you come down here and click on load more, it will show you a more number of papers related in that, obviously in a decreasing uh, years. Okay. So this is one way you can identify the most recent papers. Second thing you can do is to look into the most cited. So let's say I want to see what are the most cited papers. Okay. So say here is a paper in 2021, which, uh, which was published by B. Binder. It has 63 such citations. Okay. So, so now if you remember, if I go back and go back to this most recent trend uh, uh, way of searching the paper, I can see that there is one paper by uh, Binder also. It, it came here also in 2021. And now when I'm looking into the most cited, uh, Here also this paper is coming. So I can consider that this paper to be a very good paper as a seed paper for my study. So, okay, so this is how I can identify seed papers for my research. Okay. Okay, so let's look into what are the other things we can look into. So let me go back to the initial set of uh, uh, Elicit. So Elicit here, this is your home page, and here's the option to open a sidebar. So here's the library where you can add your own papers and other things. Okay. And uh, yeah, so this is all about Elicit. Elicit has a very clean interface in that sense. And uh, it, uh, if I go to the account settings, uh, so uh, once you log into the, uh, uh, once you make a free account, you give it gives you a something around five thousand uh, free credit to uh, do any kind of uh, uh, systematic literature review on its website, okay. 
So uh, if, and if you want, you can buy more credits also. So let's now look into something more. Say, now let's say we have these papers and uh, we want to uh, do more research on this. So I'll go here, click on this add columns. And now here I can see that here are a couple of uh, uh, parameters based on which I can describe the what kind of data I'm trying to extract from this uh, search result. Okay. And what what are the parameters? So I can look into the intervention here. So I, I can look into the outcome measures. Okay, so there are a couple of points which is uh, already been mentioned here. So I can look into the intervention, outcome measure, say uh, the detailed study type. Okay, the limitations of these papers, and what was the say any any other points that you want to look into. So I'm going to look into these four parameters: limitations, detailed study type outcome measured interventions and let's see what the result shows so now you can see that for each paper in the right hand side i have the abstract summary which was already given to me along with that there is the intervention uh, outcome measured and detailed study type okay and if, if there is any limitations so again uh, since this is an ai based tool it may not directly detail uh, identify all the possible parameters from the paper directly but sometimes it do give a very good result for example let's look into this paper artificial intelligence in cancer therapy so here it says that the outcome measured was that what was the drug discovery the uh, drug development what was the clinical validation what was the administration at the point of care and what the treatment outcomes similarly if i look into other papers it, it talks about, say, for example, this paper, uh, Artificial Intelligence in Cancer Research, Trends, Challenges, and Future Directions. It says that the, uh, it says that the outcome measure was the accuracy and the consistency of the cancer diagnosis, the likelihood of a person to get a cancer, customized treatments for cancer patients, and side effects of the cancer treatment. Okay, so, so this can re be really helpful uh, once you are trying to make a consolidated uh, systematic literature review for initially to for you to get started so here is another option called filters so once you click on the filters it has it gives you directly option to see which papers has a free pdf so if i click on this it automatically uh, uh, for each paper it will show that what is the pdf link for that paper you can also reduce the publication year so say that i'm um, for example i'm looking for uh, papers from say 19 uh, say last uh, oh, uh, one decade say 2014 to 2023 okay so what are the study types i can identify say i'm looking for meta review i'm looking for a meta analysis or a systematic review or looking for randomized control trial or say longitudinal data okay so what are the keywords that i'm looking for in the abstract say i'm looking for cancer okay I'm looking for cancer as a keyword. Okay, I'm looking for artificial intelligence as a keyword. Okay, so and then I click on save. So then it again starts looking for those additional set of papers which are based on given my queries. And then it generates another uh, summary of the top four papers based on my requirement. And now I can see that the paper by Binder in 2021 is coming at the very top. So, so my initial idea that I'm looking for this paper as a, my seed paper is a very good choice. So now my validation about identifying the seed paper is getting backed by some data points. Okay. So let's look, uh, let's try to see that what is the file we can access this. So artificial intelligence in cancer research by precision uh, med, uh, medicine uh, by B. Bind. Let's look into this paper. I click on this and it will, it's opening in a new tab. And yeah, you can see that this paper, I can I have a direct access to this. So this is a paper which is a, which is a review type 
and it's giving me direct access to read this paper okay so this is how i can get access to almost all papers which are having the pdf so if there is a paper which is behind a firewall uh, in that case elicit will not be able to access that pdf but uh, which whichever paper uh, is open and freely accessible you can just click on this link and it will open the pdf in a uh, new tab okay is this clear up to up till now any questions okay i can see a couple of comments in the chat box okay all good yeah we are good i think we can okay. go okay yes okay fine so this is the first way to identify that what can be your possible seat paper so it not necessarily that you have to choose only one seat paper you can choose a multiple number of seat papers to get you started okay so this this is how you start off with the first step of identifying the seat paper now once i have identified the seat paper i can also say if i click on this um uh, sham yeah. i think the window it's uh, powerpoint okay. it's not showing can, yeah sorry, sorry, can sorry. you i think we are seeing the yeah. pdf yes now it's, we can see yes okay, fine yeah so so once i click on this pdf uh, on on the elicit itself it it, it 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 can show a certain points also say a summary of the abstract okay so if there is any intervention what was the outcome what was the detailed study and other things so you can have a, a how have have that access to the paper directly on the um, on the elicit platform itself okay so let me go back to the yeah so yeah so another thing which i can do is that i can select a paper and directly click on show more like this so then it will start generating what are the other papers which can, which is semantically mapped to this paper okay so it's showing at this moment that there is only one paper uh, which is the development of a genome derived tumor uh, type prediction to inform clinical uh, cancer care which was published in 2019 which is i mean which is somewhat semantically related to this uh, this paper by winder okay so now let's look into something more so this is how we initially start off with identifying the seed paper so so one of the advantages of uh, using elicit is that uh, whenever i start off i can directly find the summary of the top four papers so i can consider uh, this top four papers as my seed paper now you might ask me that how elicit is identifying these papers as the top four papers so there is an algorithm behind that but uh, explaining that algorithm is right now probably will not be a good thing because it, it will take us slightly off the track uh, maybe in some future master classes i might try to ex explain that how that al algorithm per, uh, works actually okay but for the sake of simplicity let's assume that these are the top four papers which i'm going to look into so once i identify this paper so let me just download it okay so i'll download this paper Uh, this artificial intelligence in cancer research as precision medicine and uh, let me see that what are the other tools i can use for uh, identifying the now the seed papers uh, sorry now, now since that i have identified the seed paper what are the other papers that i can identify say my leaf paper which is ancestral and the uh, successors so what i will do i'll go back to google yeah and type uh, lit maps so lit maps is a literature map software for literature review and research okay so once i click here it will take me to this landing page called uh, where i can again i need to just log in I, as since i already have an account so those who don't have an account you just need to sign up with your uh, simple email 
and it will it, be good to go. Okay. Again, both both of these apps have partially paid services as well as free services. I am I am basically using all the free services till now. Okay, and uh, and they are sufficient to do any kind of systematic literature review uh, unless you require a very um, a huge number of papers. Okay, so for any standard systematic literature review, the free version is sufficient. So here is a new uh, tool called LitMaps. So LitMaps has three features called Seed, Discover, and Map. Okay, so I'm going to explain what each paper is. So here is my, uh, so let's start with Seed. Okay, so once I click on this Seed, it will take me to this particular landing page. And it says here is a uh, uh, here is a option for you to find an article using the title, author, keyword, or the DOI number, or you can directly import from your reference manager. Say, for example, if you are using uh, say EndNote or Zotero, something like that, or you can search using an Orchid uh, author. So let me just uh, so if I click here, it will give me a search for an article by title. So what I will do, I will copy paste the title which I was uh, of that paper which we were looking, which was by Vendor. And yeah, so artificial intelligence in cancer research and precision medicine. And let's see if LitMaps can identify that paper or not. Okay, so the first result it came is directly of that Vendor paper. If you remember the same paper which we find out in Elicit. Okay. Along with that, it is also showing some other additional papers which you can consider. Okay, so let's say I'm going to pick a few more papers. And okay, let's leave it. Uh, so let's, let's just consider this Winder paper itself. Okay, so I click on this paper and I uh, then select it. So in the top, you can see there is a blue tick, and then I click on generate seed map. Okay. So now it will take me to a page like this. Okay. So here is my paper, Artificial Intelligence in Cancer Research and Precision Medicine by Binder, which is in this graph is the seed map. So let me explain this graph to you. So in the left hand side, you can see this is the legend, which is the seed article. So the seed article is marked here in blue which is the Windows paper and what are the other articles. So each the size of the circle is determined by the number of times it is cited. The It is cited by going up in this manner and the date is coming here. Okay, so in the left hand side, this is more like the old papers while as the right hand side, this is more by the new paper. Okay. So from here, I can now see that Windows paper was previously linked to say a paper by here Gottlieb and say Zoo or say Beda or say Esteva. So these are the ancestor papers which Windows paper has cited. Okay. And now from here in the right hand side corner, I can see that what are the papers which has cited Windows. So these are the, my successor papers. So once I'm able to identify these two parameters, it becomes very easy for me to look into to see what are the relevant papers for uh, against this paper. So say that I'm reading the Windows paper and I want to see that, okay, what are the papers which this paper cited? So I can directly look into look from this graph. Okay. And let's say which, which are the other papers that cited this paper. So from here, I can see that, okay, these are the papers that cited this paper. So this gives me an overall idea that what, 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 is the, what are the other papers I should look for here. So this gives me the idea of the seed paper. Okay. So here seed map shows basically the top 20 citations and their references which are related to a single article. Okay. So this is how the results work. So this is my seed paper and what are the relevant top 20 citations and references against that particular paper. So I can save this also directly into say uh, making a new collection or I can uh, export it directly uh, as a BIP file 
or in a CSV or an RIS format. So depending upon how you use, use your reference manager, you can directly get all the uh, references of this paper into, into your, uh, for your research. Okay. So one of the key aspect is that I can use this particular image for making up even a presentation also. So I can, so let's say I am presenting uh, my literature survey through PowerPoint. So instead of making in a table, I can just use this particular image. So I, what I will do, I'll click here, export the image. So if I click, it will download the particular image into a JPEG file or such a, in, a, in a PNG file. And I can use it for uh, showing it as a slide. Okay. So this is all about seed. So now let's look into discover. Okay. If, if any questions with seed part till now? If there is any question, please let me know. Now let's start with discover. So I click here on, so I, this was seed in the top part. Okay. Now I click on discover here and I click on new search. So I'll be using the same thing. Uh, I click on articles and I going to paste the same name. And click on search. So it is again showing me the uh, same paper on the top. Now the fun part is that I can add as many papers as I want to. Previously in seed, I could add only one paper because that was my seed paper. Now I am looking for what are the other papers related, which uh, say a lit map is suggesting and how they are faring against uh, say my seed paper. So let me select uh, say. Okay, uh, select uh, say 1 to 20. So I, I can see that, that there is uh, 171 such papers which talks about this artificial intelligence in cancer research and precision. Okay, so I am going to select, let's say, the top couple of papers. Uh, so as I'm clicking, you can see that the number is getting uh, uh, increasing. Okay, so let's look into the top. Uh, I am going to select uh, first a 20 articles. I, 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 I uh, click here uh, and type my number and then I add those 19 inputs. And now here is my circle or the circle of the reference papers which I can look into. So now I can see that how uh, my papers. Um, so my seed paper was initially the Windows paper, other papers in the same domain, whereas what are the other important papers which these Windows papers might have missed? Okay, so for example, this paper by Mehta. So this Mehta's paper has no link with Windows paper. Although Mehta's paper came later in, in 2023, it has not cited Windows paper, but maybe it's an important paper for my research. So this is how Discover allows you to find relevant papers which may not be cited by the original uh, seed paper also. But using AI, you can still find out what are the other relevant papers in that domain. Okay. So if I click here, it shows that uh, the algorithm which is using that highest amount of common references or citations to your input. So these are the papers that was selected by Litmap's algorithm, which has the highest amount of common references and, and or citations based on my input. So this is the algorithm which works here. Okay. And all this you, you are doing without any kind of uh, computational part uh, programming, which is required from your side. Okay. So this is how you can identify the relevant set of papers in your area. So is this part clear? If there's any doubt, please let me know.
Okay, I can see a question. Uh, Suzy Sharma is saying that uh, is there any particular database? Uh, uh, so it, it usually tries to access all the open uh, papers which is not against a particular paywall. Uh, so so the so papers which are usually available uh, free free to access, they can uh, uh, you you get access to this. Okay, Amit is asking. Uh, is discover search same domain or across different domains? Uh, so it, it searches based on this particular uh, concept. Say uh, the highest amount of common references and or citations against your input. So it need, need not be necessarily from the same domain. Okay. But not much on say cancer treatment, but have some common references that paper may also come up here in the search. Okay, is there any other question? I can... No, I think we can move on. I think no questions now. Okay. So that was seed to discover. Now let's come to the third part. It's called map. Okay. So map it allows you to create. Uh, so map objective is to visualize your research to tell a better story. Okay. So let's click on this create a new map and let's call it say papers related to. Cancer research using AI. Okay, so here, this is my map called Papers Related to Cancer Research Using AI, and it is allowing me to add articles. Okay, so I can here again search for the articles, import from the reference manager uh, or from my library or using some orchid uh, number so i'll click here add articles search for articles and let's say i again give the same thing that artificial intelligence in cancer research and precision medicine okay or let's say this is instead of giving let's look into some very generic kind of uh, articles say artificial intelligence in cancer treatment And if I give a search, let's see what are the papers it comes. Okay, so now, now you can see there are a couple of more papers against you. So again, select a set of papers which I am finding randomly interesting, and let's see what map it's generated. So you can again see that Binder's paper is coming back. Okay. So let's say um, I'm trying to see. Okay, let's look into something more. Let's say let's first 50 articles and see how it turns out. And I click. So I. Mac. I click here and click. okay. So now you can see that here is another map which is not against a seed, but it is actually showing how the how each paper is connected with each other. Okay, so previously we had started off with the windows paper but this map is showing me that okay maybe this paper by mitsala in uh, 2021 is is uh, cited by yin as well as uh, by avram as well as by chandra and uh, sorry, uh, as well as some other authors here is a paper by q 
in 2022, which is in other things. So this gives me an overall, uh, uh, you know, some idea that what are the additional papers I should be looking into. So once I have this set of data with me, I can now go ahead with a um, and find out what are the relevant papers against my query. Okay. So each uh, part here, see, discover, and map has different purpose. And if you know how to utilize them properly, your systematic literature review becomes very easy. Okay. Any doubts? Okay, I have a question. I can see a question from Siddhi S. Okay, hello, sir. Are these tools specific to open access papers? Yes, uh, these tools uh, can access all the open access papers. Any questions or doubts? No, I think so far, I think we answered the question. So we can go ahead. Thank, thank you. Um, I, I think we can go ahead. Yeah, I think there is no other. OK, I see one other question. Let's see. OK, so there is a question saying, so they don't consider subscription paper. So uh, they, they can show the initial set of uh, uh, parameter or, or, or say the basic information, but they will not be able to access. OK. OK, so. Uh, Okay, so, so so like LitMaps, there is another app called uh, Connected Papers. Okay, I'm showing it just a second. Yeah, just a second. Let me stop sharing this. Yeah, so just like uh, late math, there is another paper or uh, another tool called connected papers. Okay, so connected papers also allow you to visualize academic papers uh, in, a, in a in a graph format. So what I will do, I will again paste that link uh, of that paper, say artificial intelligence in cancer research and physician medicine, and let's see if uh, it can build a graph or not. So this is the connected uh, papers uh, website. So, you, uh, so in the right hand side, you will find a login option. Since I already have an account, it, it directly takes me to my account. And uh, I, here is the op uh, here is the search bar where you can put your search query and you click on build a graph. Okay. So 
again you can see that directly it's showing the first paper uh, called by binder the same paper again and a couple of more papers okay so let's take the same paper and ask it to build a graph so how to read a graph so each node here oops it got okay so here you can see that uh, this is my base paper uh, the binder's paper and along with it what are the other papers which got published in a same in a similar format so the closer the paper is it is nearer to my research area so maybe a paper which is uh, here say cortis may be slightly different from uh, what i am exactly looking into although it may be on the same domain okay so this is my origin paper and along with it shows what are the other research papers that you can look into so as you click on uh, in the left hand side the uh, the particular paper your seed starts getting changing so so for example a role of artificial intelligence in risk prediction uh, prognostication and other things this paper by aryan mansoor is uh, coming here at uh, so this paper by mansoor is becoming now seed paper and it is showing that how far it is from my original papers winders paper okay so this is how you can do so uh, another thing you can look forward is to see what are the prior works so again i select this and click here on prior works it actually shows that what are the other relevant papers that came before winders paper and what are the citations what is the years what are the other details etc okay similarly i can also look into the so, so what, are the, what are prior works so prior works are basically the uh, the important seminal works in this field and could be a good idea to get familiar with them okay so uh, this is what all, all about prior works so you can consider the ancestral papers as some kind of a prior works okay and let's look into the derivative works so these are the papers that cited by uh, cited many of the papers in the graph so this usually means that these are either surveys or of the field or the recent relevant works which are inspired by many papers in the graph so from that graph i can see that what are the other papers that came here so these are, i can call my successor papers okay so uh, selecting a paper from here uh, will highlight all the graph papers cited by it and selecting the graph paper will highlight all the derivative works citing uh, it okay so here are the other papers you can see which came as a part of the derivative work of this original paper by binder okay so this is how you can use no code ai tools uh, initially to get started with your literature survey okay so i guess i have already exhausted more than the given time schedule so i'll stop here at this moment uh, with these three tools and if there is any question i am happy to answer them okay so there is a question hello sir can these tools be used to make a reference bibliography yes okay uh, yeah you, you can do that so all most of these tools allow you to download the uh, given set of uh, papers as a reference or a bibliography okay amit is asking uh, could lit maps and connected papers uh, create a graph with keywords instead of full repeated yeah it, it, it can do the same thing also so no issues with that okay so this was the three tools that can help you to get started with there are lot of other tools also uh, it's not possible to explain all of them in this small time span but uh, maybe in some future master classes in ethic society we can have them or maybe if uh to to a workshop in t4e we can also have them uh, in a face in a face to face format teaching online is slightly difficult but uh, maybe this can help you to get started with okay
Great. Um, so I think we maybe have another three, four minutes. Uh, so yeah. by the time, I just want to thank you, uh, Dr. Shamtak Das, for taking this time to share your expertise on, you know, this, using these tools. It's, I, I'm sure the questions that we had from the participants shows the interest and the interactions. So thank you once again for um, yeah. doing this session. And uh, so meanwhile asking, so we will stay another four minutes, but I will share another, um, you know, form um, with you. So please go ahead and fill this form, uh, letter of participation. And this form will be available only for next five to seven minutes, okay? So after that, this form, form won't be available. Those who are joined now, they can go ahead and um, fill this form. While you are filling the form, I think we got another question as well. Uh, so let's see, the question is, uh, um, hello, sir, can lit map and connected purpose make a summary table like illicit? So that was another question. Okay, so yeah, you can try to get it, but uh, illicit is better in that sense. Okay. So, I mean, uh, since if, if you go back to the PowerPoint slide, which I was showing uh, before. So once you were done with your lit survey, then you need to make a summary table. So you have a summary table at the initially in the beginning, where it shows you what are the uh, papers you need to look into. And once you are done with your uh, lit survey, then you need to prepare another uh, summary table uh, for it. So there is other tools that can help you to do that thing. Okay may not be lit maps or connected papers. These are very good in identifying what are the leaf papers around uh, my research topic. If I can answer, I hope that answers your question. Okay. Okay, so Salim is saying that there are some questions in the chat. Okay. Uh, I, I think we have answered all the okay. questions. Yeah, great. So uh, so the form is available now. So go ahead, those who need uh, a letter of participation, so you can submit the form. And the form will be available next five minutes. And um, uh, so thank you again. So we might stay here another two, three minutes. And if you have any other lingering questions, you know, we can uh, answer those questions. Wonderful. Okay, so the, uh, one thing to clarify, so these are the couple of tools to get started with lit survey. These are not the uh, finite set of tools that you can use. There are much more tools. So for, uh, since I'm working on this particular field, so uh, one of the students from Iser Pune is also working with me in particular particular area. So we have identified around 15 plus tools in the same uh, this domain, and we are now trying to build up a stack where uh, you can start off with a query and end up with a result saying that okay, this is the systematic literature review against your given query. So we are trying to develop something like this. Okay. So there are more tools uh, which I'm. Uh, which, which I usually teach in a course in here in IIT Bombay. Uh, so if anyone wants to get interested in that, just let me know. I'd be happy to share the details. Um, so I have a, just a curious question. So yeah. what about the book book chapters? You know, some of the book chapters are peer reviewed. Yeah. And uh, so how old do they go to get the data? Like, for example, the seminal publication, some of them like 1950s or 1960s, some of them are not available, um, you know, yeah, digitally so, available. Yeah, so, so so they do access, do have access to the old data also, what we have seen. We have, we have, we have seen papers getting cited from 1970s. Okay, in the, in the graph they are coming. Uh, and it's actually showing that how your current paper is related to that particular paper. To, to, to this level, you can actually find out. out. So the advantages of using this kind of tool is that it, first of all, reduces your search time. So, so compared to a normal Google search or a, say, a search in through a, a PubMed or any other uh, search, academic search uh, database, it, you have to do it manually over a period of time. So uh, same thing here, the AI tool is doing for you, but at a 
very low span of time so that you have uh, now access to more data at your uh, at, at your will and you can it is backed by some kind of data point to tell that okay this is how this paper is related to something else so you don't have to read a paper and then find out okay this is not probably usable to, uh, this is not properly useful to, for me and then uh, leave it in some other way okay so this is the advantage of using you no know, code ai tools so the follow up actions uh, steps after this is how to read a paper so let's say you are finding a very difficult paper say a journal of say uh, for 40 50 pages how you read that paper how to i do you, uh, so you can upload that paper into some tool and then keep on asking it questions and you and it not, not only can ask it some questions it can actually ask it to explain some graph okay say say a graph is there a table is there you can just select that particular table and a graph and you can start asking it that explain this to me or summarize this paper to me you know or what are the what are the possible uh, areas of work that can come out from this paper so these uh, so ai has reached up to that level so where you can look into a paper upload it and you can and it will generate that what are the research questions you can look forward from this paper so once you have this going up in a step by step manner uh, then your overall uh, time required to do a systematic literature review uh, exponentially goes down second thing is that even if you are not uh, expert in doing the data analysis you can just up, uh, say a lot, lot of these papers come with their own data set say a csv file to upload that csv file into some uh, ai tool there are tools to do that and you start asking questions about the data set that explain this data set to me and it actually explains you in a, in a way a class teacher explains it that data set to you okay you can even ask that what are the outliers directly without looking even into the data and it shows that what are the outliers in that data point you can ask it to plot a, a graph for you or or a, say uh, say say you have the data and you ask it that okay just identify and plot certain part of this data based on the given parameters and it, it should actually do that so your understanding about any research now is can get very clear over a period of time without spending that much time but it's not but the again as, as i said previously the caveat is not that uh, you are going to not read the paper you have to read the paper eventually but these tools are going to help you to do that so there is no escape from reading the papers you have to read the papers Okay. So okay. Was, uh, yeah. Yes, I, I think this is very helpful, and uh, thank you. It's uh, just starting, and uh, so we'll continue this conversation in the future. And uh, thanks uh, once again, uh, Dr. Shamdak Das, for uh, sharing your expertise, and all the participants who joined. And uh, so we are going to end the stream now. Thank you again uh, for joining. Thank you.